Have you ever been on a randomized server and got one of the best loadouts you've ever seen? Just absolutely destroying the server with the perfect combo of weapons? No? Yeah, it's pretty unlikely. Not a lot of the weapons from each of the classes work together. Like, a scout with the syringe gun, sapper, and machete just isn't gonna hit very hard. But what if we could curate it a little bit? Well, that's what we'll be discussing in this video. We'll be theorizing at how much stronger each class would be if we swapped out their primary weapons. Just their primary weapons, mind you. I believe that this will make for a much more interesting discussion as you actually have to consider what combos they have. Oh, and I say theorizing because A, no one runs randomizer servers anymore, and B, my pea brain couldn't figure out how to set up a server that would let me swap out weapons. Without further ado, let's just jump right into it with Scout. Now, a pretty obvious one right out the gate would be Soldier's Rocket Launchers. Using these, Scout could take care of his biggest counter, that being sentries, and can help him take care of crowds of enemies. Rockets are also great for 1v1s, which are Scout's specialty. Being able to run away slash around corners really fast as you reload is also a pretty big plus. Now for the combos that make this even more busted. Two of Scout's secondaries turn this from a weirdly powerful weapon swap to downright busted. The Criticola and Mad Milk. On-demand mini crits for rockets is already pretty good, but throw that on top of something like the direct hit for insta-kills on any light classes. You could also just pick up the mad milk if you're taking too much damage, and if you're taking way too much damage, throw in the black box. Everyone already complains about the black box, so imagine how fun it will be when you're healing even more for shots you didn't land. Now these are good and all, but there's something I think should be noted. The classic drawback of self-damage, and Scout? Scout does not have a lot of health. That means you're likely to kill yourself while fighting any explosive class or even a pyro with afterburn. And forget about rocket jumping, you really want to enter a fight with less than half of your HP? And this is all ignoring the fact that Scout already has some really solid mobility that he doesn't need to improve via a self-damage option like rocket jumping. So even after all this ranting about how good the rocket launchers would be, I propose another option. Pyro's Flamethrowers. Sure, this won't help out with Scout's sentry problem, but Scout players have already found plenty of ways to play around them. By not playing around them. Scout takes the flank routes, he picks off specific targets, he's the 1v1 class. Now give him the ability to not only reflect pills and rockets that often plague his closed space combat, but he can actually effectively use afterburn. Run in, douse them with fire, and run out. Sip on your drink, or toss in some milk before running in, and hey, now you're killing whole groups of enemies. And probably the biggest selling point of this whole choice. Scout can use the flog. I mean, do I really even need to say more? Add in Scout's great mobility, fast speed, and if you really wanted to, toss some milk in there? Yeah, that's a rage quitter maker. I'm torn between these two primary swaps. I find myself leaning more towards the flamethrowers as I can actually see scout mains use this over their traditional scatter guns, but it's basically choosing between two S tier options. Up next, we have the soldier. Now, it's pretty obvious that keeping him with his launchers would be the uncontested best choice for him, but shush, I'm trying to have fun. Alright, so all the soldier's mobility tools are in his launcher, so now that we took that away from him, he is essentially a slow 200 HP mound of flesh. But he does come with a few backpacks that are pretty good, so considering that, my choice for his best weapon swap would be Heavy's minigun. What I'm envisioning is turning the soldier into a slightly faster Heavy with more team support. Banners are already a great tool for rallying a pub to push the point, and I've seen it rally more effectively than an uber charge. So given Minigun's constant damage, I can imagine it would be pretty easy to charge up a banner. That being said, that's all there is to say. Sadly, the weapon swap for Soldier is less about finding out what works better for him, and more so finding about what doesn't make him worse. He's too slow for flamethrowers or scatter guns. His bulk and banners want him to be on the front line, so no sniper rifles for him, and I believe Pipes would just barely lose to the minigun. Pyro's turn now. Pyro is in a very similar boat to Soldier. Taking away their favorite toy really ruins them. It's almost like each class was designed with the weapons that they can use in mind. How about that? So I have two ideas for a weapon swap for them. First up, sniper rifles. Both Pyro and Sniper have the same movement speed, so it would just be a bulkier sniper that can survive sniper duels better. Sniper rifles are already probably the strongest primary in the game, so it's a bit of a boring answer to just give it to Pyro and move on. We'll be sure to encounter this same issue in a later video too. 
So my other idea is mainly just silly. Shotguns. Specifically, NG shotguns. Scatter guns aren't a bad pick either, but I'm picturing a sort of double secondary pyro, where they can make use of both their stock shotgun and a flare gun of their choice. Heck, maybe you could do some really wacky stuff with the thermal thruster and Widowmaker. Or go full stupid mode with double shotgun gaming. Now on to Demo Man. Thankfully, Demo Man already comes with two primary weapons, so we can actually have a bit more fun here. That being said, I believe giving him miniguns would be the strongest option. This gives him a strong, non-self-damaging option, but most importantly, it gives Demos a lot of powerful combos. Firstly, now he's just a faster heavy who can also use stickies, and if you know TF2, can also use stickies should be enough to justify nearly any primary swap. Secondly, Demo can swap out his stickies for his shields, allowing for some charging and some silly tanking strats with a medic. Finally, and most importantly, Demo's melee weapons, namely the Eyelander. Not only could he get some more health, but he can also get a 30% movement speed buff. That would negate nearly all of the speed loss while revved up. Not that Demo Man was ever close to heavy when he's fully revved up in terms of speed, even without any heads. Heavy's up now, and similar to a few others on here, if you take away Sasha from Heavy, he's not gonna be happy about it. Plus, being the slowest class in the game makes most weapons bad on him. Sure, we can just say sniper rifles and end it there. Hang out in the back lines as a nearly uncounterable threat of HP and insta-kills. And while that is clearly the winner, I'm just gonna throw in another option here for fun. Pipes and Rockets are going to perform very similarly here, but I'm going to go ahead and give it to Rockets as Heavy can actually use Rocket Jumping, and he needs it too. That boost to his mobility is very welcomed, even if he would just become a budget soldier. In terms of combos, Sandwiches could keep his HP up so he can Rocket Jump a bit more, and you could even do some shenanigans with the KGBs for some Crockett Spam. Or we could just go for Double Shotgun Gaming! Double shot, double gun shot gun gaming. Double shot double gun shot gaming. Double shotgun gaming. It's uncounterable, man. When the first one's out of ammo, we can just switch to the other one. Double shotgun gaming. Double shotgun gaming. Double shotgun gaming. Look at all these jumps he can do. You can't stop that. <clears throat> uh, on to NG now. NG really just has two secondaries, so he can only be upgraded from this. As such, there are many different options for him to choose from. Mini guns, if you want to sit down next to your dispenser and have two sentries. Pipes if you want to spam them down choke points, flamethrowers if you don't feel bad enough for spy, sniper rifles if you want to pick off those pesky soldiers right outside of your sentry's range, the list goes on and on. But if we wanted to choose the best primary weapon to swap, in my opinion, I'm going to throw out a bit of an odd option. Medic's primaries. Yes, they're all pretty ass for damage, but NG doesn't really need a strong damaging weapon. I believe that syringes will do just fine against Angie's more common battles, but the real reason I throw this onto the list is for the Crusader's Crossbow. Look, Angie does not have a lot of health. Even if you're right next to your dispenser, you can still get mowed down pretty quickly if you pop out your cute little Texan dome at the wrong time. So, I think that by giving Angie the Crusader's Crossbow, it's going to open up a whole new way to help your team. With ranged healing, you could just spam bolts at the card or at the point to heal your team, and you might even damage an enemy or two. And sure, this would make NG a lot more boring to play with this as his primary, but considering how little medics we see, a swap like this might make him THE most important player on your team. Medic's up now? After having graciously gifted his weapon to NG, he gets to swap it out for a new one. Thankfully, much like NG, swapping out his primary weapon will do only good for the medic. For my choice, I'm looking at the Flamethrower. Burns those pesky scouts and spies, reflects projectiles, and keeps those Devil Knights and Pyros away. Less effective on that Pyro part, I guess, but speaking of that... If you choose to ignore your class responsibilities, you'll arguably be a better Pyro. Sure, you're only 7% faster than Pyro, but Medic's passive HP regen is underappreciated and I believe could take him quite far. And assuming for a moment that the swap actually did happen, you would definitely find multiple medics running around, so that means constant overheal to make up for that 25 HP difference that Pyro has. So yeah, in short, you get a mobile safety bubble to protect yourself, and you're not defenseless when your team abandons you. Now on to our saddest weapon swap, which is likely the saddest weapon swap we'll see in this series. Sniper. Sniper, without his sniper rifles, is... 
well, just a guy. Average movement speed, light class health, and only like one weapon to combo with? This swap can only make him weaker. The only thing that Sniper has going for him would be his Jurati. That's just the plain and simple of it. He doesn't really gain much from his backpacks, or even that much from his SMGs. Those are pretty decent though. But his P does give him a bit of potential, namely with explosives. Rockets or pipes, both dealing mini crits will never be bad. Rockets can be spammed from across the map, but considering the range that you can throw the Jurati, I think that pipes make a little bit better of a choice. Especially when you consider how long the Jurati duration is, and when rollers are a thing. That or, I don't know, give him revolvers so he can at least pretend to be a sniper with the ambi. On to our final class, the Spy. This sneaky Frenchman could really do a lot with some different primaries. Since I'm assuming that your disguise won't break until you fire a shot, you can potentially do some really silly stuff. Maybe you could surprise air blast an enemy off a cliff, fully charge up a cow mangler shot, or, you know, fully load up a Baker's Bazooka shot before unloading that, rev up a minigun before raining lead down upon your enemy, or even quick scope a really far away threat that isn't safe for your knife. All pretty good options, but for my choice, I'm going to go with scatter guns. We all know that Spy likes to fight at close quarters, backstabbing or trickstabbing his opponents in a beautiful showing of attacker favoring gameplay. So then, why give him a scatter gun if he can already insta kill with his knife? Well, there are a few reasons. Firstly, as someone who tried maining Spy, sometimes people just turn around at the wrong moment. And at that point, I can assure you that some solid meat shots would be a very welcomed power. Secondly, Spy's invisibility, giving him the ability to flank behind the whole enemy team would only get better with a scattergun. To the degree that I think I can see Spies dropping their knives in favor of simply two-shotting their opponent. And lastly, the combo Spy would get with the scatterguns are really, really good for him. Backscatter's mini crits made even easier with invisibility, Soda Popper for a really easy escape, Big Earner with stock scatter gun for an extra speedy scout, or you can even use the Kunai with any scatter gun for an extra healthy scout that can still backstab for even more healing. But the best combo of all, in my opinion, the Baby Faces Blaster. Sure, with a 13% decrease to movement speed at the start, it can be pretty damning, but man, the amount of stabs you could get when maxed out, which is 50% more speed, would be insane. One of Spy's biggest annoyances is that he's just slightly too slow for most classes, but with this weapon, that issue's gone. This is not even mentioning that the BFB's speed increase can be gotten from any damage source you've done, and yeah, that includes backstabs. So take the day off, Big Earner, we've got your replacement right here. And that's all the classes. Feel free to debate your own choices down below. I can recognize that my ideas for the best weapon slot might not be gospel, but hey, I think I did a pretty dang good job. That's gonna be it for me. Hate to do this second engagement bait, uh, but if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like so that I know to keep doing this series. And until next time, have a good one.